So it's been a while since I've actually done a video that has a particular purpose to it that is independent of what I've been doing with my day. Usually for these past few weeks I've just been actually explaining what I've been doing and giving my feedback on how it felt and uh, the effort I put into it, what kind of stuff I've been doing. Today though I'm going to be talking about the importance of timekeeping because why not? Just thought of it a couple of seconds ago and um, just saw that clock then in the um, background there and thought hey why not do a video on timekeeping. So timekeeping is a pretty important thing as we know. Um, you actually do only have a limited amount of time in your life. I think that people waste away a lot of their life and that's because uh, they don't, they kind of delude themselves into thinking, well, they don't consciously think that they're going to live forever, but they delude their subconscious mind into thinking they're going to live forever because they're living uh, the lives of these fictional characters on a Netflix series. But th the real case is, um, if someone if someone gave you this kind of timer that was strapped to your arm and this timer had the amount of seconds left you have to live in your life, and let's say it was like, one billion six hundred and eighty one million nine hundred and twenty three thousand seconds left then you are gonna you're gonna actually take that crap seriously because you are confronted with the the unfaltering unwavering truth that that thing on your arm it's actually quantifying the horrifyingly limited amount of time you have left and i'm not saying horrifyingly in the sense that it's gonna it's a bad thing to die, I'm just saying horrifyingly, because you've been deluding yourself into thinking that um, that reality doesn't exist. So that's that's a thing to think about. You have like this certain amount of seconds you have left to live in your life, um, unless immortality is going to exist for people in the future, though I highly doubt it. Um, so yeah, and another thing I could talk about with this is how we wait down the clock when we're trying to finish work. So a lot of the time people will come back from break kind of late so they only have a certain amount of time then left to work and it's just pain avoidance because you could be putting the time to some good use but instead you're just wasting it and pretty much taking away your only finite resource. I could understand that. I could understand a life of delusion where I'm just. There's people outside now. Couldn't stand a life of delusion where I'm just. Um, wait, like. Distracting myself with this hyper reality or this reality. And I'm try. I'm like. Just waiting for my life to end. It's like. How. Uh, this is gonna be very. No, no, I'm not gonna mention it. No. Just gonna say something about nursery homes, but. Um, it's a bit too, um, a bit too edgy, even for this channel. So, yeah, don't really know what else to say on it. I suppose putting your time to good use is a viable strategy as well. And by that, I mean looking at the activities that are genuinely going to contribute to um, bring you to the point where you can achieve what you set out to achieve. So if you um, if you're going through through agonizing pain, then that's, that's probably meaning you're using your time well. Sorry, there's something on my phone. Using your time in a way that's actually conductive to the thing you're trying to set trying to set yourself out to achieve, which is a good thing. And today in particular, I kind of just used my time in a way that was half wasteful, uh, if I'm being completely frank. That's only because I had nothing else to do. I had no other lead sourcing because I wasn't able to lead source because D7 Lead Finder isn't free with unlimited searches. You only get five searches a day, which is I'm still grateful for the software, but it's a limit. I can't really get past it. Unless I wanted to go into maths, but then I'd have to go into D7 anyway later on, just skim through other things. It just won't be a real good use of my time. And I could have also emailed, but that would also have required lead sourcing and again d7 lead finder so that story was kind of um it kind of tied itself up there so then i instead chose some chose to do something else i chose to just watch a bunch of um charities videos and i just did nothing else just listened and listened 
and I've also been uh, listening to the subtle art of not giving of by Mary Manson and I think it's actually more informative than I thought it would have been and it's quite applicable to my situation as well. Spending too much time giving a crap about offending people. Like a couple of days ago I, I would have felt kind of guilty when some pharmacist was saying, why are you talking to me like that? You just killed my firstborn child. Uh, and I like, I didn't do anything to you. Oh, 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 who, who, are, who are you talking to? Uh, and he's just like, excuse me? What? What? Something like that. I don't know. But anyway, wait. Um, doing that is a, just worrying about that is a waste of time. And it's not just a waste of time, it's a waste of energy. And both are um, functions of your primordial fuel acting out into reality. Time is like your primordial fuel because you're um, you're expending it every second, and there's a limited amount of it, and you can't really increase it measurably anyway, and you can't measure your time either. Also, you uh, your energy is a primordial fuel because you're uh, you should just kind of have a limited amount of it. If you expend too much of it, you're going to kill yourself. Um, for example. That guy who ran like 42 kilometers in Greece or something, I think he he just collapsed and he was dead then. So the best use of the time, I think, of your time is to face the truth. And facing the truth involves having self-awareness and conscience about what you're doing and and willing yourself to do the right thing and deviating a bit from truth now you could use your imagination to come up with alternative possible future solutions that would improve your current situation as we see it now now i'm kind of talking in general terms but um it just means using your time to um, get the best possible output output from the time i I would spend my mornings worrying on weekdays because I'm just doing cold calls and you know that's a worry worthy topic but when you're um, when you think you're kind of wasting time when you're worrying about it but then you realize you're in the middle of like pushing up those Guinness World Record books for the 20th time then it's kind of different because you're not actually wasting time that's why I try to focus more on my response and what I'm doing at the moment whether i've already like you can't really punish yourself or feel any shame like you can feel fair but not shame for um doing these these habits but worrying about the thing you can't feel any shame for it because it's still important and you're going to get onto the calling right after but you need to focus on the response not how bad the situation you were in is your priorities just need to be realigned and that will save you time because if you spend too much time on lower priority activities, you're going to waste your time and you're going to be closer to death when you achieve the goal than when, than otherwise. And again, not saying death is a bad thing, but I'm saying use your suffering in a way that's actually going to be conductive and worth it. Because if you're just um, if you're just struggling away and you're not actually achieving anything, then what's the point of it all? There is nothing. That's why I couldn't just stand a normal career where I'm comfortable because I've suffered too much in my life already. Way, way, way too much. Probably more in my life than most people do in like five lifetimes. And I'm not going to let that go to waste. I'm going to propel myself, put myself through even more of it, make my best friend. And then I'll actually have the output um, in one lifetime that other people have in five. So or more so yeah that's how one time i'm using my time and every single day i'm just consciously aware of the fact that i'm one day closer to 20 than the last and i know 20 is no age at all but i still don't like the idea of turning 20. Heck, I'm not even gone on the fact I'm 19. <laughs> well, I remember when I was 18, I was just counting down to my birthday, and I just did not want to turn 19 because it means I'm one year older, and um, it's just less impressive. I don't know. 
it's probably an actual internal issue I have that uh, the younger I am when I succeed and um, the better I feel about it because it's kind of uh, it's kind of a situation where you just see all of this people in the space who are just really young and they've already achieved everything and it's hard to measure up I'm not saying like I'm offended or anything but uh, I just want to kind of beat them and crush them you know just that natural thing and now my time is going on this in this video it's like nearly 11 minutes long I do hope I've put value into it though I feel like when you leverage time properly, it can become a kind of multiplier indice for percentage growth in how good you become. So let's say you record yourself every day and you get better uh, by 1% every day. That's going to compound. So it's like 101%, but then you multiply that um, by itself about 100 times. And then after 100 days, you were like three or four times better. Could be more than that or less three or four times better than you were before and I can already see the difference now when I started YouTube videos I was now I'm not saying I'm good now but I was way worse than this <laughs> I wasn't able to actually talk without stammering or stuttering I wasn't able to to maintain a consistent flow and talk in a way that was very articulate and I'm closer to that now than I was before and I know that there's still people that were better than me and heck I haven't made more, there'll be a bigger difference between me three months from now uh, than me three months ago but with this time because the growth compounds, it doesn't, it's not linear, it's like, uh, let's say if you grow by 1% every day and you compound that over a year, you're going to be 37 times better than you were at the start, that's kind of what I'm hoping for, now of course it does plateau because there's only a limit to how good a human being can get but even now, as I'm saying this about myself, I can feel myself performing better in this video now even than I was in the beginning because I've actually kind of filled my brain with the belief that I can do it because I consciously articulated it outside in a verbal manner and my brain understood it. And I re my brain realised just now, a second ago, that because I am consciously articulating it, it's... Uh, it's actually going to manifest itself in reality because I've given myself the conscious reasoning that it's happening and this is the respect of reasoning bias it's when you give someone a reason to believe something they're going to be more likely to believe it and that's probably what I'm doing with my brain now so today when I had plenty of time nothing to really do I first thought of hmm, maybe I should go around and google maps and just have a look at the possible places I could live in when I'm older and you know what didn't interest me at all <laughs> not at all but then I started watching those videos and I found them quite valuable and I wrote down the timeline of my life that I created when I was in that three day period where I just wasn't thinking at all or I was completely thinking and doing nothing else I was just thinking wrote down my life path I thought of it all and I'm not sharing it on this video but I shared it on that Google Doc with myself and it should just be a good thing to come back to because it's going to realign my brain with what I genuinely intend to achieve in the end. As I said before, the uh, the second habit of All the Effective People by Stephen Covey is begin with the end in mind and that's exactly what I'm doing and I'm quite enthusiastic about what I'm going to be doing with my time in my 20s and 30s and, and so on because it's just going to be something that genuinely means a lot and it's going to be pushing the country in a way gosh it's already, it's already given away my scale that I'm planning pushing the country away um, towards the the goal that I have have set out for it so yeah that's my use of my time and I hope you're using your, your I hope you're using your time as well in a manner that's nearly as good and if you succeed somehow it's going to cause a feedback loop you're going to become addicted to it anyway and that's what I look forward to every day and now I don't mean to keep going on in this video, I know it's long enough, but when I was doing some freelance work and I was doing some copywriting, I think, was it? I, I don't remember the job. Oh yeah, I was making these logos. I thought I was going to get paid $3,500 and I was so happy. And uh, th then the person started pressuring me to send over the tax that I had to pay beforehand. And I started to realise, yeah, this is probably 
a lie. I was just so happy in the lies. But the point of this anecdote isn't to talk about how I was, I was scammed, it's to talk about the feedback loop that almost triggered in my brain because it was pure ecstasy and euphoria when I realized I was gonna get that money. And it wasn't that bad when I realized it wasn't true because even the thought of it, possibly even the possibility, was just amazing to me. And that's just what I'm kind of looking forward to on a consistent basis in the future when I'm actually able to charge for my, ser for my services to businesses that can't afford it. That's going to be good.